Why don't you tell us what what happened? Okay. 1977, January 25th. Um, I got up as I usually do, and I went to Peoria Junior High School. And upon entering the school, the principal directed me to the conference room, uh, the teacher's conference room. And, uh, and there I met with two detectives who began asking me the questions about the death of James Robinson Jr. and Connie Cooper. James was a friend of mine. He also went to school there at Peoria Junior High. And I didn't know how I could help him, but they seem to think I could help him because I was the last person to see them alive uh, on January 17th that was outside of their family members. And they kept asking me when I come to the police station. Uh, during the initial conversation, I told them I did not want to talk to them, you know, because uh, uh, I just didn't like police officers at that time, you know, because uh, community where I grew up, so. Um, they convinced me to go to the police station with them. While then, they placed me in an interrogation room. They said I was free to go at any time, but every time I asked, could I go home, they wouldn't let me go home. You know, they just kept me there. They wouldn't let me leave. They wouldn't let me talk to my dad. They wouldn't let me do nothing. You know, so I end up leaving at like 10, 30, 11, 30 at night. They took me, and they asked me would I take a polygraph test. So, you know, I, he did about an hour and a half, two hour polygraph test. They took me from there to juvenile detention center. From there, they placed me in custody, held me overnight, came back the next day and got me on January 26. And uh, they began questioning me all over again. And mind you, I haven't eaten yet either. Uh, it took another turn and went south when they, um, uh, they asked me to come into the police washroom where they stripped me naked and took hairs from all parts of my body and took my clothing. Uh, and uh, the more they done, the more I was confused. You know, uh, I really didn't know what was happening to me. I think at about 10 o'clock, they allowed me to see my dad. But by that time, it was so chaotic around there that him and I couldn't communicate because he didn't understand why I was there and I didn't understand why I was there and, and all that happened was just a bunch of yelling. And so at that point, I didn't really care anymore. I just wanted to go home. Maybe about 7.30 that night, they took me to the polygraph examiner's office again. He began, in the middle of the testing, he began calling me a liar, a murderer, just everything negative he could think of. And uh, the testing stopped. I didn't know I wanted to talk to him anymore. So tears rolled down my face, and this other detective came in. And it was also Officer Marcella Brown. She came in as, the, I guess, as the good cop, I guess. And uh, she began to worry me along. I didn't know what she was talking about. She would ask me, did the crime take place over here? Did it take place? I said, I don't know. You know. And about 30 seconds, that's all it took. And I said that, okay, I did it. Can I go home? And when I said that, it like changed everything. Because from that point, they asked me, would I sign a confession? Would we do, could we do a written confession? And I refused. And that only made them more angry. But, I managed somehow to regain my composure and get my wheel back. Because I had lost my wheel because it was like a nightmare. It wasn't real. And I kept telling myself, it just can't be real. It was bad enough my friend James was gone. But here I am sitting here accused of his murder and the murder of his sister. And that's like, I, I thought I was like in a nightmare. I just couldn't understand what was happening to me.